guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Tori D. Simone. Today I have an everyday natural makeup look that this has been my go-to when I go out with friends, I film podcasts, I record anything that like needs makeup that I wanna feel pretty and put together in, but I also want it to look like I'm wearing makeup. This is not that no makeup makeup where it's like Hailey Bieber, I put on a dot of concealer. This is like, I want to look like I'm wearing makeup and I want my makeup to have technique and strategy behind it. And I wanna be pretty good coverage. I'd say this is like a medium coverage foundation um, makeup routine, but I want it to still look like myself and I still want it to be natural. I feel like this is exactly that. And I'm always really happy with this makeup. It's pretty lightweight. It doesn't really bother my skin, my eyes. Um, it's simple to do, it's quick enough, and I feel really pretty and confident in this makeup routine. So, um, all the products I use will be linked down below. None of this is sponsored. These are all products that I've either purchased or have been gifted in the past. Hope you guys all enjoy, and let's get started. I just curled my hair and I'm letting it set, so that's why it looks a little too done, but it won't really matter. I'm gonna close that so you guys can't see the mess that's in my background. I just moved, so I still have like some things. So the only thing that I've done so far is I've washed my face and I put on the CeraVe moisturizer. The first thing that I'm doing is applying this L'Oreal Lumi Glotion. I kind of rotate between this and the Drunk Elephant Drops and honestly, just like whatever is closest. But I do find that this has the best longevity and I think it looks the most natural if you're just looking for that glow. Now I go with the Say Slip Tint. I love this stuff and normally I mix it with like a little bit of a face oil but I don't have a face oil with me but you can kind of see the stuff just glides on. It's so nice and that's another thing is that I've switched to using my hands to apply a lot of these products. I don't even have a sponge with me. I don't know, I just feel like a sponge doesn't do it for me right now. I definitely go in phases of how I like my makeup to look, but this is like a natural makeup look that is well applied. Like, I don't even know if I'm explaining it correctly, but I'm hoping you guys know what I mean when I say all that. And then I just buff it in and just tap it with this Real Techniques or is this It Cosmetics? This is It Cosmetics. It's just like a brush that I've had forever. This is the Anastasia Brow Gel Brow Freeze, and I really like it. I feel like when your brows are in place, it really elevates your makeup look. So the first thing that I do is brush them like all the way up like this. And then I take the top and flatten them down. And also, yes, I am in a sweatshirt because I don't know about you, but I can't be bothered to do my makeup in the clothes that I'm actually gonna wear for the day. I just, to me, makeup is like messy. And if I were to wear the clothes that I was gonna be wearing all day, I would just get makeup like all over. And I plan on wearing a white t-shirt today, so there's just no way I'm gonna wear a made well white t-shirt as I do my makeup. See how that just like, see your face, it just elevates it immediately. This is the e.l.f. contour wand and with a few dots, I'm gonna start with that many. I just like to carve out my, specifically my forehead. I just find that if I put bronzer straight on my forehead, it can just look a little bit weird like without a cream underneath, just to kind of guide it. Like that's the thing with cream products. I just use the cream products to kind of just intensify the powder products. And I like how it looks. And I really like the e.l.f. formula of this. I think it blends really well and it's like a fraction of the price in the Charlotte Tilbury. And I don't like the Charlotte Tilbury formula. The other formula that I really like for cream is Rare Beauty. I think that's really nice. And I kind of just buff this in. I'm also really pale right now and all of my makeup is like for when I have a spray tan because I find that I don't really wear makeup on the day to day. Like today I'm filming two podcasts and 
It's really the only time that I wear makeup is when I film podcasts, if you're lucky, because I don't even do it every time, but today I did. Okay, then I'm gonna go in with a flat MAC concealer brush in the NARS um, Soft Matte Complete Concealer. I love this concealer. I first was only using it to carve out my brows, which is what we're gonna do right now. This, if you wanna elevate your makeup, like this is the thing to do. So I kinda start low. And this is not like a new tip. We all know carving out your brows is a tip in the makeup world, but I used to not do it because I just was like, eh, it just kinda seems like pointless. No, when you start doing it, it elevates your makeup so much. I also really hope I'm not getting sick. I kind of feel like I sound a little bit sick in my throat and my muscles today are so sore for kind of no reason. And my aura ring score today and yesterday was just absolutely like plummeted. So I don't really know what's going on. I carve out my brow and then I also just take more concealer on the flat concealer brush and I put this underneath my eye. I used to not use this concealer underneath my eye. I don't know why, I just saw like on TikTok and stuff, people would only use this concealer to spot correct and not use it underneath their eyes and everyone was using the hourglass concealer. So I, of course, got the hourglass concealer it's very full coverage, it's very pretty, but I find that it makes my mis... Oh my god, I almost said mascara, which is like such a toast way of saying mascara. It makes my mascara transfer, and I just found that it didn't really hold that well. So I switched over to using this underneath my eyes, and I love it. So I kind of have a little trick. So what I do is I put this concealer everywhere that I want coverage and I kind of layer it on. I don't really hold back too much and I just sort of put it where I want it. And the concealer does such a good job at blending itself out that I don't really need to do a lot. It's really very creamy. And so yeah, I just put this anywhere that I want coverage. So I put it on my eyelid, underneath my eye, and then I just move on to the other eye. Concealer makes such a difference. Like, look at this compared to that. Like, I I need concealer. I didn't put on chapstick and I just remembered that. Let me know if this happens to anyone else though. I got my eyebrows waxed and every single time that I do, I always break out. I don't know if it's because it's like the ripping of the skin or maybe it's like too hot. I really, I don't know. So again, just put the coverage where you want it. And I find that with makeup looks like this, the skin is the most important part. When I first got into makeup, doing my eyes was always the most important thing, like the eyeshadow looks and the eyeliner and the mascara, and that's all super fun. But with looks like this, like an everyday kind of makeup look that makeups, you know what I mean by that? The skin is really important. I, like so is framing out the eye and we'll get there, but the skin is kind of like the most crucial. So I lay down the concealer where I want the coverage and then if there's anywhere else that you wanna cover, this is where you do it. I don't wanna cake up like my T-zone or anything from highlighting, so I just use a lot more contour to make other parts of my face look lighter. Then I take like a dense concealer brush like this and I just kind of go in and pat around the edges and just so like, I'm just, it's like the lightest little touch you guys that I do underneath my eyes just to kind of blend that in. But it really is already blended. Like this concealer does such a good job. I feel like if you're gonna get one product from this video, have it be this concealer. It, it's just such a good full face concealer and I really like it. It just melts into the skin. So I'm really just buffing out the edges so that it blends into the slip tint and anything that might have been cakey or harsh is being taken away with this brush. Okay, and then before it can crease, I always do concealer as the last of my cream products. So then before it creases, I take a setting powder. This is the Kosas. Um, breezy cloud set powder and a powder brush. This is a Sigma F35. I don't even know if I, I don't even know if Sigma Sigma is still around. And I kind of pack it on, and then I pat this right underneath my eyes, and I just really, really set under the eyes. This is key to having like a flawless under eye without creasing. It lasts all day. 
it lasts all night and your under eyes stay really bright. I do like to bring concealer with me and if I need to touch up concealer, I do. But I found that since I do a two powder technique, which I'll show you the next one in a second, um, I don't need to touch up concealer until like eight hours of wear, which is rare that I'm even wearing makeup for eight hours, but if I need to. And then I'll put this anywhere else that I wanna mattify. So typically just down my nose, around my mouth. Look, I would love to not crease around my mouth, but I've yet to meet anyone that doesn't crease around their mouth. Huda Beauty, any loose powder. Um, this is cherry blossom and then a powder puff. Mine is like way too big. Also, how do you clean these? I have no idea, never done mine. I take the powder puff, mine's really big, so I just try to fold it in half as best I can and I just press it in the powder and I just kind of bring this along the sides of the nose and under, underneath the eye to bake it. Just like that. And again, this sort of just sets everything, but this also helps blend the blush in. I am not the biggest blush girl. Like I know blush is super in right now, super trendy. I have tried it and every single time I try to do a lot of blush, I find that I just look, I, I like make myself look 10 years younger and I maybe one day will want that, but like when I put makeup on, I don't wanna look like a seven year old. Like, you know, I wanna look mature. I wanna look like sexy a little bit. Um, something that I'll do some days is carve right here. Well, I have a little bit of extra powder, so I guess I'm gonna do it today. Carve right here, like underneath my cheekbones. I don't do it every day. I guess I did it today, just very lightly. Okay, moving on, powder. Um, I have been using the same powder, bronzer products and stuff for a really long time. So I love the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Bronzer. This is in number two, and I love the Morphe M530 brush for bronzer. I've had this bronzer for two, three years at this point, Katie Fawn posted about it and I bought it whenever she did a few years back and I just hit pan on it. And every time I do my makeup, I use this bronzer. So it lasts a long time. And this bronzer just goes anywhere that I put the e.l.f. cream contour wand. And what I really like about this bronzer particularly is how well it builds, not only with itself, but with other products. It plays very nice, meaning I can layer other bronzers on top of it, and it just creates a really nice base for other bronzer shades because it's, for me, for my skin tone, it's a really neutral shade, so it works with warm bronzers and cooler bronzers if I were to like really contour, which I don't really do, but, if I wanted to, it works really well. It also is light enough that it's very natural when I'm paler, like today. But when I'm tan, it also just adds a really nice like blending buffer shade for other bronzers. If I was more tan, I would probably start with this bronzer and then I would go in with the Anastasia powder bronzer in saddle. Now I'm way too pale for this today, so I'm not gonna do it. But bless you, I would just put this, bless you, I would just layer this right over top of everywhere that I'm putting this bronzer. And then if I was to go like outside and want like a sun-kissed look, I would put over top of that, MAC Give Me Sun. Now I'm not gonna do all that today because I'm not doing anything crazy. I'm just filming some videos and I don't wanna be like orange on camera, so I'm just gonna stick with just this. But that's what I would do. You just kind of have to layer a bunch of products together. Then I go in with a blending brush and that same bronzer shade. And I put this on my eyelid in my crease. And this is what keeps the makeup really cohesive and all talking to one another and looking really monochromatic on the skin and just very I don't know, like it's it's well blended with one another. And down the sides of the nose, and this is kind of when I begin to wipe away that bake on the sides of my nose. This really just blends it out with having that bake. And I find that it just creates a really nice seamless blend. And I also make sure to really concentrate it right here on the inner part where my crease and the bridge of my nose meet. That makes your eyes look smaller. I'm sorry, it makes your nose look smaller and your eyes, I don't think it does anything to your eyes. And then I also put some underneath my eyes. 
Moving right along for blush, I go in phases of what I like for blush. Right now, I really like glowy blush. So I'm using the MAC Stereo Rose. This is like a really old blush from MAC, but if you wanted something more similar to that, um, I also really like this Fenty Cheek, the duo cheek thing. I forget what it's called, but I'll link it below. Um, but it's pretty much this just from Fenty. And I take this on, this is a BH Cosmetics brush. This is so old. And um, this is just like a mineralized glowy blush. So I smile, I put this on the apple of my cheeks and I sweep it back. Blush with like too heavy of a hand looks really weird on my face shape. And when blush doesn't really have a glow, it's kind of just, it's harsh on my skin. So I really like a glowy blush that could kind of act as a highlight and one that sort of just looks like I'm glowing from within. I find that anything that's too cool toned pink doesn't really look good on me. I like deeper mauve tones. I like red, rosy tones. And I also put some on my nose just so it looks more like sun-kissed and you can put some above the eyes, eyebrows if that feels good too. And then I go in with the powder brush that we first used and now it's just kind of when I wipe away the bake, pat it in, and now I just kind of go back and forth between these two products and just merge them together, with like the bake and the blush. I know some people put like pink blush underneath their eyes and it looks really pretty on them. It looks horrendous on me. And that's the thing with makeup. Like you just have to play around with what you like because everyone's face is different and how you like your makeup on you is going to be different. It's kind of like when you get your hair done at the hair salon, sometimes you love it or you hate it how they style it because you're used to seeing your hair one way. It's the same with makeup. Like just because something is trendy doesn't mean you have to do it. Okay, next up is highlight. I love this highlighter. You guys have probably seen all these products a million times, but it's because I found products that I really liked and I stick with them. So this is Laura Geller Gilded Honey and I use a Morphe M5110 brush. And I just put this on the high points. And I love this highlight because as you guys can see, it just gives a really pretty glow. But then when I look at you dead on, it disappears. And I think that's the best kind of highlight. When you can see someone's highlight and it's just like a streak of color without that illumination, it just looks a little weird. And I also like to put it above my eyebrow. And that's it. Moving right along, that pretty much concludes the face. So I'll go in and set the face. This is the one size setting spray. This stuff for real is the best, like nothing compares. I'm gonna fill in my eyebrows. Now because I like sculpted and carved them, there's really not too much that I need to do. So I just like to go right underneath the front and underline them and kind of just go along with that concealer line that I've made and just sort of emphasize that. And also the Anastasia Brow Freeze has like totally dried down at this point. So it's kind of hard to even like get in there. So I kind of just fill in the gaps with like these little strokes and call it a day. There's really not much to do, which thank God. I also have my eyebrows microbladed, so I do cheat a little bit in this department, but I honestly hate filling in my eyebrows, so I'm really glad that I don't have too much to do. And then I just like to focus it kind of in the front as well. It's a little more sparse in the front as it naturally should be. So I just keep it as natural as possible. I'm gonna go in and highlight my eyes. I've been using this the whole time as a mirror. I just like it, I don't know. This is the Benefit Highlighter in Cookie. It's so pretty. It's a little bit too much for a cheek highlighter, but it's perfect for the inner corners. And if you guys are really OG, then you guys will know that I used to love Nylon by MAC. I um, shattered it, I think, and I got Shroom to replace it, and it's just never been the same, and I just never bought a new Nylon. And I found this in my collection, and I just really love this right now, so I've just been using this. But I just put this on my, the inner corners of my eye and underneath my eyebrow. Now, if I really wanted to like make up my eyes and make them look dramatic and full and all this sort of stuff, what I would do is I would line my eyes with a little bit of eyeliner, wing it out, and also line my waterline. Now, here's the problem with my eyes. 
I don't know what's going on. They water so much. Anytime I put any makeup on, my eyes just water and water and water. So anytime I put eyeliner on, it looks good for about five minutes and then it's either gone or it's smudging or my eyes are really irritated. So I haven't been wearing eyeliner lately, sadly. I would love to wear it, but it, my eyes are just like rejecting it. So I kind of just been holding off. So instead, my eyelashes, um, I used to use Babe Lash and I still do sometimes, but I've kind of just been like getting away from lash serums just cause I'm lazy and I honestly forget about them. So I've been putting on fake lashes on days that I record. And also just on the days, just anytime I wear makeup, I've just been putting on false lashes because it just gives your eyes like that va va voom and it looks really nice. So I'm gonna put on lashes, but I'm using the Naked Lashes. These are Ardell 420s. I really, really like these eyelashes. So I'm gonna pop these on and oh, the lash glue that I use is this one and this one only, it's waterproof, it doesn't budge. It's definitely the best duo in the green tube and it has this little applicator that makes it really easy to put it on. So I'm gonna put on my lashes. I haven't put on any mascara yet and I'll be right back. Lashes are on, I don't have any mascara. Um, sometimes I like to put like a white on, this actually isn't even white, it's, um, it's called Baby Powder by NYX and it's like a really light blue. Sometimes I'll put that on my inner corner to brighten up my eyes, but I don't think I'm gonna do that today. While that does dry, I go in and do my lips. Now, it just depends on what day you catch me if I line my lips or not. I kind of just grab whatever lip liner is closer. For like a more makeup-y look, I will line my lips. This is the Refi in Taupe. I'll just do like a little line today. I don't really like to overline or anything. I just follow my natural lip line. And then I love this lip gloss. This is Buxom and Sugar. It's just like the perfect darker shade, but it's not too dark. And it's also a lip plumper and it's just, it's really pretty. It matches my natural lips pretty well. And it gives, my natural lips are like naturally pretty dark. Like I don't have like a pale pink anything on my natural lips, which I wish I did sometimes, but they're pretty dark. So I find that this matches them well and defines them really well. And then by this point, my eyelashes are typically ready to have like something layered on them. So if you're feeling bold, you can curl them to kind of blend them together, which I'm gonna do very lightly. I literally do like a very simple pop. And then I use one of two or both mascaras. The first one is L'Oreal Telescopic. Now that it's dry, you can kind of manipulate where you want the lash to go, which is really nice. So I always like mine to be pretty up. I didn't put on mascara yet. Okay, now I'm gonna go with mascara. And I kind of just use this, I wiggle it on the lash line to kind of blend the band with the lashes. And I kind of just blink. I try not to really put the mascara too high up on the false lashes. I just think that makes them look really, really fake. So I kind of just use this to blend out the band and fill that in. And again, like I said, you can use eyeliner and stuff, but my eyes just have not been liking eyeliner. But if they did, I would do a little, little wing and a little bit on the lower lash line and then a little mascara on the lower lash line as well. And I also make sure to focus mascara here on these inner lashes where there aren't false eyelashes and that I think really helps blend the eye and just fill out the eye and just give it like a really nice full shape. And don't you see the difference between this eye and this eye? I do. I need to have my friend Lindsay on and do like get her beauty secrets because she can make up like, if you want a look that is like, I am wearing makeup, I am not like transforming my face, but I'm beating the fuck out of my face and I'm gonna totally like make up this shit. She's who you wanna follow. Now, if you are someone that you don't like it totally bare on the bottom, go ahead, add mascara to your bottom lashes. But for me, I just find it looks a little weird sometimes. So I've just been kind of doing it like this, but I think I'm gonna add just a little bit of that deeper bronzer under my eyes. I'm gonna use Matt Give Me Sun because this also has like a little bit of an orange tint to it. So it's really pretty on blue eyes. 
and it just gives a little bit of shading to the under eye and it just gives it some depth. I'm gonna change my shirt into not a sweatshirt and I'll be right back. So just some finishing touches. It's just a white tee from Madewell. I love it. I also got this necklace from Madewell. Um, it's gonna be a little bit weird with my microphone, but like the finishing touches of getting ready are really important in my eyes. Like normally if I'm going out somewhere, I will brush my teeth. I don't think I want to do earrings today. I don't always like earrings. Sometimes they're just like too much. A little bit of perfume oil. I love perfume oil. This is from Target actually. It's um, Frenchie in Lavender Cloud. And I love perfume oil. I feel like it lasts really, really long. Finally, I always like to put lotion on my hands afterwards. And this is the same, This none of this is sponsored by the way. I just went to Target yesterday and had fun. Okay, I'm a girl. Um, this is the Frenchie, same thing, lavender cloud body lotion. And I just put this on my hands. And normally I'll brush my teeth too when I'm done my makeup, but. And that completes this. I only had 30 minutes on my SD card and I'm glad that I got it done. So I know that this is a 30 minute makeup tutorial. All right guys, that's that's all that I have for you. Thank you for watching. Um, I can definitely do more videos like this. It's honestly really fun for me. So let me know if you guys want more. I love you guys and I'll see you on my next video. Bye guys.